Greetings Nakama, and welcome to a video that's going to attempt to make sense of one of the wackiest animes to hit the scenes. When I say wacky, I truly mean bizarre. No, this isn't a JoJo reference, but I would argue that the characters within this series can give any of the brilliant styles and designs from Araki Sensei a run for their money. Within JoJo's, we extend over different generations of young people as they discover their powers. What is found within the context of Mob Psycho are the misadventures of one soul. Not this guy. He is basically the pet of the series. I am talking about this guy, the blank-faced, unassuming one. Yeah, him. He is fairly normal in comparison to the rest of the cast. Meet Shigeo Kageyama, the titular mob that is mentioned, and his unassuming appearance works incredibly well when depicting and differentiating him early on from those around him. When first diving into episode 1 of season 1, this pilot almost immediately injects us with the weird from the beginning. As we begin to understand Mob and his world, it seems almost unnatural that the weird and crazy styles and outlandish designs are a common trait. And I love the dynamic that this introduces. From the jump, I mentioned that Mob was the most unassuming character. In this is the brilliance of the world we find ourselves in. The one that truly stands out from the crowd, that stands above all the rest, just looks so normal. And it is the understanding of this impact, this engagement, this influence that allows anyone approaching this series to have something deeper to take away from. For it is the understanding of the influence, not only of yourself, but of the influence of others have on you, that you can really begin to become in a league of your own. Within Mob Problems is all this and more, and in a depth method of the digestion able to be parceled for those willing to take the dive. Through the three seasons that we have seen, Mob has had to understand what it means to be a psychic, the influence that psychic has on other people, and as we are beginning to become fully engulfed in season three, a depiction of Mob of what his impact on the world could potentially be. What does it mean to have great power? Thinking back on season one, the first few arcs depicting not only Mob, but his approach to the world and the inhabitants around him are clearly defined. What is as important though, is the varied approach to how those with powers view their role as an esper. In following Mob, we become smitten with the Sensei Reagan and come to adore his family as Mob moves through his studies. Within this first arc, we see him coming against a fellow middle schooler whose esper abilities have catapulted him into basically being the ruler of his prefecture. Up until now, Shigeo has been seen trying to develop himself through terms that would be considered standard. He joins a school club through physical exercise and gains a strong foundational confidence for moving forward. He begins to garner authentic friends, so when he is confronted with his foe that tests his ideology about what it means to be an esper, those that he has brought into his circle serves as a saving foundation. Power is an intoxicating entity, and if it can be used to enhance your day-to-day -day life, it becomes all the more tempting. While Mob doesn't seem like the individual to fall for temptation, we see him grow and the ideas of what he wants begins to infringe on the area on how he sees his powers. What he has inside him isn't a reason for thinking that he is owed anything or is innately better than anyone else. The ideal start for the pivot that the season later takes. For in the beginning, we had to experience Mob making a stand on his point of view with just one person. This one individual is truly serving as the catalyst and main antagonist and allows for Mob to focus his attention on that one person. However, what is in store for him is a testing of that on all levels. And what is most important is that they force him to understand the limits of his pacifistic nature. As those around him are beginning to develop powers, they are kidnapped by a group of Esper terrorists. Those using their powers not only for personal development, but to move forward in an ideological viewpoint, specifically around them being a superior race, one that is not hindered by boundaries and morals that humans must be regulated to. Their egos were one for the ages, and each member, while being powerful in their own right, were no match for Shigeo. He brutally dispatches each one by one, and along the way crushes their viewpoints in his pathway. They were supposed to be gods on earth. Their power is what gave them the right to shape this world in whatever fashion they choose. And when one so young arises, the might to blow them apart, their might by right mindset is solidified, however, completely distraught by the ideology that this individual is strong because he uses his esper powers to defend those around him, not subjugate them. As season one ends and a new one begins, the story centered around Mob's understanding of himself, his powers, and how he should use them pivots. As our pro tag team steps into the new season, this theme evolves into the impact that espers have on those around them. At its purest, this essay takes into account the impact that we have on others around us and what are the factors that influence our behaviors personally. With many protagonists, there are a plethora of features about them for any type of viewer to latch onto. At mention at the top of this video, 
Shigeo Kageyama is very basic compared to the rest of the world around him, and that alone allows for many people to latch on to him. There are so many that find themselves trying to learn who they are, and in a similar instance to the metaphor of Mob's appearance, see themselves as not fitting into the world around them. The brilliance of the world created by Tomohiro washes these viewers with many more characters and allow for a connection to be formed with. These bonds are formed even with those that are tormented. As season two begins, Mob is caught off guard and rendered immobile by the tragic outcome that has befallen someone he sees as a kindred spirit. Such drives our pro tycoon into a deep state of depression. His spirit cratered, it is his little brother and newfound friends that offer him the space and the room to lift up and place his first foot forward. This little moment of personal clarity arises at the perfect time because of the conflicts around Mob ascending into the narrative. As outside forces begin to swirl around a world of influence and those that push the chronicle of events begin to conflict together. Contained within this story is the subplot of a master that is nowhere near as skilled as his pupil. Through this first season, Mob is leaned on almost entirely and as season two progresses, his developing and independent nature urges him to step further away from his mentor, allowing his senpai the opportunity to stand on his own and begin to learn how much Mob's present affected him. Comically, this reaches its head as he is exposed for being a fraud on live television. Super awkward and hard to watch for fans of Reagan, but the instance literally allowed Mob to see for his own eyes the results and in instances of those that rely too heavily on him. And what happens when he's not around? Should I be there for people even if I want freedom? Or should I be where I want to be? A decision so many of us face when forming bonds and learning the impacts our lives have on those we care about. While we are not psychics that can move items with our minds, we are humans growing and developing in a world where our worldview and self-perception is constantly colliding with the rest of the environment. The emergence of this revelation takes center stage as the main unit and leader of the Claw organization make their move. Within the main climax of season one, the characters engaged against were somewhat the captains of Claw. As this battle rages, it becomes obvious that the power engaged within this conflict significantly dwarfs anything seen in prior members. The stakes are raised and the conflicts are on a whole new level, but now Mob isn't alone. His actions over the past 20 plus episodes between seasons has seen him recruit Claw members, friendships found with prior rivals, and even the emergence of those with latent powers following within his lead. While not the most elite of groups, this hodgepodge assembly is brought together by the most unlikely of influences or should I say, influencer. To influence others is to allow those around you to see your ideals and viewpoints and make a conscious decision for themselves. By forcing the thoughts onto others, there's no personal acceptance, and in many cases, outright rejection. This connection developed through Mob with all those around him reflects the patience that is not reflected within the leader of Claw as a whole. Their arrival is met with a sense of urgency rooted in fear. A huge contrast to those that are aligned with our pro tycoon in the sense of calm and confidence in the shadow of Mob's presence. And such a presence it is. As season 3 kicks into full swing, this is the genesis driving the force in the narrative and how Mob approaches recognition of himself and his impact. The audience is witness to Mob continuing to grow apart from Regan, but luckily for our favorite Deviant, another psychic is brought on aboard as an apprentice. Thus, allowing Mob to feel better about not working as much and to be able to move into his new role and potential future. A new realm of possibilities and opportunities allows Mob to ease further into the experience of being a teenager, and for the first time, a true bit of ego begins to seep out from behind this unassuming stare. It is very gratifying to see Kageyama feel like it is being noticed by girls, and the joke of his face shifting allows for us to see that he is in fact becoming more comfortable with those around him. That is until the ramifications of the battle with Claw begin to take root. While not giving away too much of the current season, the town has become overgrown by giant protos, leading to almost everyone thinking the same. Within this, Mob finds himself cut off from everyone, reducing him to square one again. This is not to say that Mob is dependent on others for understanding who he is and how he got to the self-assured individual he is today. It does, however, lend gravity to the effect that those that Mob has engaged with and how it has impacted them. Mob is not some person that will do anything for someone's approval and is distraught by not being liked by everyone else. In fact, audience could claim that this is one of the more endearing parts of his personality. He is his own person. While he is gullible and may be tricked occasionally, Mob firmly understands who he is as we have come to learn throughout the series. He does not portray who he is to fit in or will do something out of the ordinary to impress someone. So what begins to happen now? 
Unknowingly, Mom's exploits in standing for what he believes in has cultivated a super passionate following, one that has elevated his potential reputation and places him directly opposed to a friend that has been by his side through most of the series. But his relevance has been taken notice of, and while we see the kindling of a person who would be susceptible to that type of worship, his true nature forces the empty platitudes aside. And Shigeo Kageyama, our beloved mob, must now really come to understand his influence and the influence that those around him have on him. Within this framework of Mob Psycho allows us the perfect image of how to approach influencing. And when you come to understand that, you're really going to be a step above the rest. And that, my friends, is why you should watch Mob Psycho 100. Hey you, yeah you, the amazing Nakama that made it to the end of our content. Hi, I'm the Dark Britain with the Runaway Warlords, and I'd like to personally say thank you for being able to check out our video. If you like what we have, go ahead and subscribe. That'll really be able to help you out. If you want to check out another video, we have one right here. And also, we have a lovely playlist for you to check out right there. I'm the Dark Britain of the Runaway Warlords, Thank you so much for being with us on this journey. We'll catch you next time. Peace.